So I think I will, I guess, well, I'll just like mute. I stop my view. You just can't see me now, right? Okay, so it's four o'clock. We'll give um, one more minute to get everyone on, and then we will go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Okay, so it's 401, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for coming today. Um, we um, are doing Trail Running 101, um, and basically this will be an online um, course of um, introduction to the basics of trail running, and this is brought to you all from She Jumps. Um, first of all, um, can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Um, 
Wonderful. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so at any point during this presentation, if um, any of you have questions, um, you can totally write your question on the Q&A. There's a little tab on the bottom that should say Q&A. You can write your questions there towards the end. We will um, answer those questions. And if you feel that your um, questions have gone answered throughout the presentation, then you can just at the end write, oh, I got my answer question, um, my question answered. <laughs> um, so the reason we did this was because um, I love trail running and I felt like we just need a lot more women out there in the trail running community. And um, we, know that typically learning how to trail run can be super intimidating for anybody um, who's running in general is hard. Um, and so that was why we created this. And we thought that just a virtual um, uh, presentation would help at least get you all into the basics um, and just learning everything you need to know. Um, so again, just write any questions you have and then we will answer them at the end here. And then um, my name is Danny. And then the um, presenter for today will be Alicia Jenkins. She's a running coach with Team Run Run. She's a physical therapist assistant. Um, and I actually um, hired her before for uh, as a running coach. And she's amazing and super cool, has done so many awesome races. And so I felt like she was the best person um, from the Bellingham community to basically talk about all of this and give all her knowledge and pick her brain about everything about trail running. Um, and basically what I do um, with She Jumps, I'm a brand ambassador. Um, so I just help promote events and um, basically create awareness to um, all the women out there regarding She Jumps. Um, and um, yeah, and we'll go, we'll go over a couple of things with She Jumps before we get started here. Awesome. And so we have this on a lot of our presentations, but just a reminder um, that we do believe in the transformative play of the outdoors um, and playing outside. Um, and I'll read this real quick. We go to nature for many reasons. For some, it is an escape. For others, a place to feel humbled and inspired. It is a place for sitting and reflecting, a place to wonder and fill our minds with awe. For many of us, nature offers a place to feel challenged and empowered, digging deep into our abilities, bumping up against our insecurities. And that was from one of our She Jumps board members. Um, so as um, some of us may know, She Jumps is an organization that promotes getting women um, outside more sometimes, or as sometimes we know that the outdoors can be super dominated by males um, and men. And so the whole um, purpose of She Jumps is to get women inspired and confident to go outside and be able to um, do anything and get the amazing benefits of nature and being outside. And then love trails. <clears throat> um, nature is a great teacher, but she's also a wonderful therapist. I love this quote actually too. This was also from one of our She Jumps board member. Um, she says, I can think of no better friend these days than nature, my, uh, nature herself. In a time when our normal routine has been appended, courage is requisite. We must now solve problems we have never before faced. Every one of us is perched atop a proverbial line, prompted to drop in, scared to fall. I can't think of another time while on earth when nature as teacher, as healer, as therapist, as community builder has been more essential. And then, um, with everything we uh, she jumps ever puts, we definitely always talk about safety. Though. So that is something that um, Alicia will definitely go over today, um, and she'll definitely give you some tips and tricks to help prepare you not only for um, trail running but also this um, how to do it safely as well. And perfect. So now I'm going to have Alicia take over, and she will start a presentation on trail running. Um, and go ahead, Alicia. Sure. All right. Can you everybody hear me? Okay. All right. So, well, welcome everybody. I see some familiar names in the people that are attending. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited just to talk about trail running. It's something that I fell in love with probably, gosh, like five years ago. Um, and I started out road running and loved road running. But ever since I started trail running, like I just fell in love immediately and kind of switched over to that. Um, so today, what we'll be talking about, it's just a very basic overview of trail. We call it trail running 101. 
Um, so just kind of the basics, and I'm not going to go into too many details about on some of the slides, but if at the end, there'll be probably like 10 to 15 minutes left at the end for questions. So if you want to ask certain questions or go into more detail about some of the things I'll talk about, um, I'll just save that time at the end for what you guys are interested in hearing more about. And so on the agenda for today, I'm going to talk about some barriers to trail running, um, especially for women. We'll talk about the main differences between trail and road running. Um, we'll go over shoes and how to get started in trail running. Um, and then the last bit we'll talk about is just being safe out on the trails and what kind of gear you might want while out on the trails. All right, so number one, talking about barriers to trail running. So I'm sure some of you, even just out road running, have been told many times, oh, be careful while you're out there. You should carry pepper spray. You should carry this. You need that. Are you sure you should run there? Um, and I feel like that's multiplied by like 10 anytime you go out on the trails. So, and that, um, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest barriers is other people telling us that the trails are unsafe. And I find that like a lot of people don't tell men these same things. They don't, you know, my boyfriend goes out for a run by himself. There's not other people telling him he needs to be careful out there. Um, so I feel like constantly having that information told to us kind of leads to number two, which is also a fear of being alone out on the trails um, because we've been bombarded with this information that it's not safe for us out there. Whereas I find that the trails, I feel way more safe on the trails than actually out in the city sometimes. Um, and then number three is some barriers could be a lack of confidence. Um, and that could be just not being sure what to expect out there, maybe not having confidence with navigation or knowing where to go. Um, we'll talk about how to um, work on navigation and how to navigate while you're out in the trails later today. Um, another one is feeling like you don't belong. I think a lot of us have that feeling and you do belong. And um, yeah, just know you do belong out there. And a lot of us struggle with that feeling. Sometimes it can be hard to find other females to go out with you. And that's what we're, you know, she jumps, tries to do is try to empower more females to go out on the trail so that there are more females and um, just more people that you can talk to that are like you that will be out on the trails with you. Uh, number six, lack of experience. So the only way to get experience out on the trails is to go be out on the trails. Uh, so don't be scared of not having experience. Maybe you grew up and you didn't spend any time on the trails. Um, I really didn't spend a lot of time in the mountains on the trails when I was younger. And, you know, I just started small and figured it out. And the last one, unsure of what gear you might need. We'll go over gear today, but really you can keep it pretty simple. You don't need a ton of fancy gear. You might see all kinds of people out there with like all these special packs and all these other kind of things. Like, oh, I don't know. Do I need all that? What is that? And if you just start small, you will um, kind of figure out what you need um, as you go. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today are the differences between road and trail running. So We'll go over each of these in more detail. So the first one is the terrain is different. Pacing on trails is gonna be different than when you're on the roads. Your focus is gonna have to be a little different as well because the terrain is gonna be different. Uh, you're gonna have to think about navigation on the trail a little bit more than when you're on the road. And the last one is my favorite one is the views and scenery is are different as well. And we're gonna dive into more details. Um, of each of these on the next few slides. So the first one, um, terrain, road versus trails. You can see roads, they're generally flat. Sure, some roads can have some hills, um, but generally they're flat. Um, the surface is smooth, so you don't have to like really think about what you're running on or you can kind of just zone out a little bit when you're on the road. The road tends to have harder impact because it is asphalt. 
Um, so that is the difference. And then you look over to the trail side, um, trails, and they're all, they're all kinds of different trails too. So this picture shows kind of a rocky, semi-rocky trail um, up in the hills. So it, trails could be technical, meaning there could be rocks, roots, dirt, water hazards, such as like a stream crossing or going through a river or waterfalls or just puddles. I live in the Pacific Northwest and this winter we've had lots of rain. So there's been lots of mud and, and puddles, um, uneven surfaces. So the terrain, even if maybe it is a smooth trail, it might be uneven. There might be like dips in the trail. And then also elevation changes. You generally, like you might be going from a low point, climbing up for a while, then going down, or the tra trail might be like more undulating terrain where it's just kind of up and down, rolly terrain. And I mean, of course, there are some trails that are relatively flat and don't have a lot of elevation changes. So trails are just, there's a lot of different trails out there and a lot of different things you kind of have to think about while you're out riding on the trails. So talk about that, that kind of leads into pacing. So since the terrain is gonna be a lot different, your pacing is going to also be different on the trails. So um, I always tell people, don't worry about what pace you're running on the trails. It's going to be different than your normal road running pace. So if you can run, I don't know, like a nine minute mile on the roads, when you get to the trails, don't expect to still be running that like nine minute mile. It's probably going to be harder, even if it is a level trail. Um, just based on the train, if you're on dirt, that's softer. So you're going to be um, running probably a little bit slower. And this is why I tell all my athletes that I coach uh, to focus on rating of perceived exertion instead of pace when they are out on the trails. So what the rating of perceived exertion is, it's a zero to 10 scale, 10 being like an all out sprint. You're going as fast and hard as you can. And a four out of 10 is kind of just like, your easy kind of conversational kind of pace. A one, two, three would be kind of more like just hiking. Um, and so, yeah, focus on your rating of perceived exertion out there, depending on what your goal with your run is. And don't really worry about what your pace is as you start getting out there more and recognize, um, like if you go up a trail with 500 feet of elevation, you might know like, okay, this is about like a normal pace for me at this effort. Um, but with that being said, you can run the exact same trail at the same effort on two different days, but the pace can still vary. And that is due to trail condition. So one day the trail, it might be sunny, beautiful. The next time you run it, it might be muddy, slippery, wet. There might be logs you have to step over. So that's why I go by the RPE instead of worrying about pace. And then this last line at the bottom, I made it all caps, bold, underline, exclamation points. It's okay to walk up hills. This is something that I wish I knew before I started trail running. Um, it's definitely okay to walk up the hills. I, when I tell people that I'm out trail running on these routes, they're always like, oh my gosh, I could never run that whole thing. And I think it's kind of like, I don't know. I kind of like to think of it as a little secret when you start trail running and get into it that all trail runners know we walk up the hills, but people that don't trail run think we run up them and I'm okay with them thinking I run up it. Um, so yeah, it's okay to walk up the hills as long as you kind of focus on that uh, rate and perceived exertion. It's okay to also walk on the level terrain. It's okay to walk when it's technical. Like that's what I love about trail running is it's just, you just, you're in the present. You just uh, adapt to what kind of terrain and surface you're on. So next slide talks about focus. So trails, you definitely have to, they just require more focus while you're running to avoid a misstep. So I'm actually really glad I ran this race in Moab, Utah, and I'm glad the photographer got these two pictures. It worked out perfect for this slide. You can see the first picture I'm walking, I'm looking at the view. It, it was a rainy day, but it was still beautiful. And then when I decided to start running again, that next picture, you can see I'm looking straight down where I'm putting my foot because that was a very steep part. It was in the beginning of the race. I didn't want to fall. Um, so take it from me. If you want to stop and enjoy a view on the trail, slow down, stop. You can pause your watch if you're recording your run. 
um, and just enjoy the view. I've tried times, many times actually, to try and like run and look at the view at the same time. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work. I've fallen. So take it from me. Don't fall <laughs> and um, enjoy the view by stopping and walking. And uh, yeah, just you have to focus a little bit more on the ground in front of you. Okay. Uh, the next one is, this is one that always probably worries people a little bit the most is navigation on the trails. So it's definitely easier to get turned around on the trails than road running. Um, even if you've, you're running on a familiar trail, trails can look different during different times of the years. If it's snowy, the trail can look different. Um, I had a runner of mine set told me his friend ran on this one trail all the time when it wasn't snowy. She knew the trail. She didn't ever use Gaia or any maps apps or anything like that. And, um, she knew it like forward backwards, but she went out on a day that it was snowy and she couldn't see the trail as well. And she ended up getting lost and had to have search and rescue called for her. Um, they found her thankfully, but so after that, he's definitely, he taught her all about, um, how to use this app called Gaia, which is an app that you can get on your phone and it shows you exactly where you're at on the map. It shows the trails around you. You can, um, you can even like take it, the, ca the camera or your phone and like turn it. So whatever way you're facing, it'll show like you're facing this way. If you're not very good at like knowing what way is North and South, Sometimes I get confused what way do I need to turn left or right here. And then I can just like kind of turn and it tells me what way I'm facing. Um, so Gaia is my favorite one. Um, I don't have any affiliation with Gaia. I'm not like sponsored by them. It's just what I've been using. And I kind of think it's the go-to app out there. Um, and she jumps actually did a course on how to use Gaia and what the different maps mean and if you want to you um, view that to learn a little bit more about Gaia, you can go to this link. You can, we'll send it out in the email at the end um, as well. But if you also just want to search on YouTube, you just search She Jumps Gaia 101 and it, and it pops right up. Um, so yeah, that's the one I like to use. And you can also use, I mean, there's things called spot trackers and that is, more, they use satellites and you don't need cell phone service to use those. Um, that's a little bit better. Maybe if you're going out pretty far in like the back country to have, um, or, you know, paper maps are always good. They, it's not like a cell phone battery can die. A spot tracker can die, but a paper map, it doesn't need to be recharged. So, um, and it's not going to, the screen's not going to crack if you let it drop on the ground. So it's always good to have a paper map, um, in conjunction with your phone. And then one last thing to mention about Gaia is that it's free and, um, you can also spend money for it. And I pay for the premium version. I definitely think it's worth it. I think it's like $40 a year and you can download all the maps on it. So that way, if you are somewhere with no cell phone service, you can still see exactly where you're at. So anytime you start using any of these navigation things, I would recommend downloading them, just kind of playing around with them at home first, take them outside just on a normal route, like just walk down the street with it, see how it works, get familiar with how it works um, before you're out somewhere on the trails. And we can go a little bit more into this later if people are interested uh, to learn more about navigation. All right. The last one, how trail and road running is different. The scenery. I mean, I think this, these pictures just say it all. <laughs> um, there's just nothing like, you know, you can run in the mountains, run in the desert, run in like by the lakes. Um, these are all some of the, these are all pictures actually I've taken or my boyfriend's taken of places that trail running has taken me. So this is why I really switched to trail running is just, it's, it's beautiful and super rewarding. And even on days where it's cloudy, it's still beautiful up at the, up at the top, it's still worth it. So yes, these are my, some of my favorite pictures. 
Okay. So next, let's talk a little bit about trail shoes versus road shoes. If you're going to be running trails, I highly recommend getting trail shoes. Um, they're just, they're, they're meant for the trails. So they're worth it. Um, when my boyfriend started trail running with me, he got a free pair of road shoes from someone and he was running in his road shoes on the trails. I told him he shouldn't. And he kept slipping and sliding around. And then he ended up with like an overuse injury just because the road shoes are meant for the roads and not for the trails. So some of the main differences with trail shoes is that there is like a stickier rubber on trail shoes um, on the bottom or aka the outsole of the shoe. And usually they'll have lugs on the bottom. The lugs are the traction on the bottom. Um, and they can be different heights as well for depending on what kind of terrain you're running on. So depending on where you live and what kind of terrain you can get trail shoes that are best suited for the type of terrain you are running on. Uh, trail shoes also have a rock plate on, in the bottom. And what a rock plate is, is it's just like um, a plate that's underneath the shoe. So if you happen to step on a rock, it's not going to puncture the shoe and puncture your foot. Um, that would not be good. So one of the other reasons to definitely get trail shoes, they have increased durability features to handle the rough terrain. They tend to be a little bit stiffer than road shoes um, just because you want that extra stability of the shoes. So I'm just going to go to the next slide that shows up some pictures. So here is a trail shoe that has some pretty big lugs. So these are a little bit bigger lugs than I use. Um, but depending if you're running somewhere where that has a lot of like mud or it's gonna be slippery and you just want more traction, then you can use, get the ones with bigger lugs. Um, and then down here also took a, added that you can add gaiters to your shoes. Um, if you've hiked, you've probably heard of these before, but they just go over the top of the shoe and that helps prevent getting like any kind of debris in your shoe, such as rocks, sand, other dirt, uh, tree branches, um, and, uh, you can get specific ones for your shoes. These ones right here are actually from dirty girl gaiters. They're pretty cheap to buy and they're easy. You can use them with any shoe. Um, they send you in a Velcro strap that you can put on the back of your shoe. And I usually super glue it on and then it just Velcros right in the back. And then on the front, there is a little like hook that goes underneath your laces. So very easy to put on. They have really fun designs. And then you can just look over here. I mean, just looking, comparing these two shoes, like this one definitely looks like way more rugged. Like it's way more durable. This one definitely a lot more lighter, not as much traction again, because it's not needed and you want lighter for road shoes. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any other questions about trail or road shoes, you can just kind of ask those at the end of the presentation. So next I wanted to talk about, so now we learned about some of the barriers and the differences in trail versus road running. So now how do you get started trail running? I think the best way when you're getting started in anything is start small. Don't start super big, just start small and you can learn just a little bit at, at a time. So the best way is to start, I think, with trails close by you or trails that you're familiar with. Um, maybe trails that have cell phone service. So you're a little bit more comfortable. And then that gives you, um, in case something happens, you have your phone and you have cell phone service. Another good way to get started is finding local trail running groups. Uh, some ways to find those are asking around on social media sites such as Facebook, Instagram maybe TikTok. I'm kind of new to TikTok. I don't know <laughs> if people use that for that as much, but maybe they do. Um, I found out about my local trail running club uh, through Facebook. They do weekly trail runs. And actually that's a picture of my trail running group up there on a Thursday, one of our Thursday night runs that we um, do every Thursday night. And it was a great way to meet people and just learn from them because everybody had to start new at some point. And if you're worried about being the last person at, a, at the group run, or if you're going to be, oh my gosh, I'm going to be way too slow. 
I would say just ask group of four, kind of what, what pace they tend to run. Um, some groups are tend to be a little bit slower. Some groups maybe are faster. So you can kind of just gauge and see before you go. But generally most group runs are going to be all paces. They usually stop at intersections and wait for you make sure no one's going to get lost. Um, but that just varies depending on the group. Another way is to ask local running stores if they know of any trail group runs in the area. That would be a good resource uh, because they're going to know a lot about the different group runs as well. Um, and then another spot is meetup.com usually has some trail runs. You could also ask in like hiking groups if they know of uh, any trail runs in your area. And honestly, that's where I got started trail running is I started with these group runs on Thursday nights. I didn't know I was getting myself into. I was really scared and nervous, um, but it was the best thing I ever did. And a lot of the people there have really good knowledge and you can learn a lot from them. So yeah, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and check out a group run if you got some near you. So this slide might be a little overwhelming, but um, I just wanted to go over how to find trails near you if you don't know how to find trails. And so this is actually the process I use anytime I travel somewhere and I want to go on a trail run somewhere new. So there, here are all the kind of websites that I use um, when I'm trying to find a trail run. So I'll usually start with alltrails.com. You can log on on the computer and they also have an app um, for your phone. So here is a picture of what the all trails looks like. So I just zoomed in on an area near me and it has these little green dots here. So there's a six one. So if I click that, that would be like six different trails. So I just clicked this one here and it said, showed the Fragrance Lake Trail hike. So click that, look at it, shows the route. Oh, it goes around a lake. Like, cool, that might be a fun route to do. Tells you about how long it is and estimated hiking time. So these are usually hiking times, not running time. So you might finish a little faster. And then also on all trails, once you click it, it tells you what it is like. Um, moderate challenge, takes an average two hours to complete. Trails open year round, dogs welcome, must be on leash, tells the elevation gain. So there's lots of good information in all trails. And then once I find the route I want to do, I will usually go on to Gaia. And so that's the app I told you about that I use for navigation. You can create your own routes on Gaia. So I like to create my route on Gaia. So when I'm out there, I can see exactly where I'm at. And then I just map the route out, looks the same. And then uh, it gives me an elevation profile, tells me the, again, elevation. And elevation is going to differ a little bit based on what site you're going on. So no, they might be a little different. Um, and then, so once I'm out there, I can open up my Gaia app and I can see exactly where I'm at and be like, oh, cool, I'm following that trail. I'm on the right trail. And then I'm going to go this way. And then when I get to this intersection, I want to go this way and not on that trail. And then the last one is, so this is Washington based, but I think all states have their own trail association, but WTA, you can log on there and I type in the Fragrance Lake Trail and there's trip reports up there. So people will, who go out hiking, they can log on and they'll put in what the hike or their run was like. So this was from April 3rd of this year. So somebody, and they put pictures on there, what it looks like too. Some people will put pictures, which is great. Um, tells, okay, it's got like a thousand feet of gain. It says it wasn't too busy. She recommends stopping by the viewpoint before heading to the lake. There's a little viewpoint before that. And she said the trail's a little muddy in spots, but otherwise well maintained, maintained. So you can get an idea of what the trail conditions are like. If you're worried, like, is it going to be too muddy? Is there going to be snow if I go up to a certain elevation? All that stuff is super helpful. And then the last one, you can go on Strava, which is another free, and you can go on the computer and use the app and you can uh, map out routes there as well, if you want. So that's kind of my process. I would say if you're interested in learning more about these, it's just kind of just log on and just start playing around um, with these on the computer and you'll get more familiar with how it works. Okay, so next topic I want to talk about is a big one. Safety. So we definitely want to be safe on the trail. I'm sure you guys want to be safe. Everybody wants you to be safe. So 
Um, that way, if you learn how to be safe out there, when people hassle you about, are you sure you're being safe? You can be like, yes, I'm doing this and this and this, and yes, I'm safe. <laughs> so number one, please plan out your route before you go and tell someone where, when you're starting and um, what route you're doing and when you expect to be back by. So this over here, this picture is a present I got from one of my girlfriends and it is a dry erase board. And so I just dry erase pen. And every day, whenever I go for my runs, I just circle, okay, it's Friday. And I left at 7 a.m. to go for my run. I should probably be back around 10, but don't worry until 12.30 because when you're out on the trails, sometimes things take a little bit longer. So don't worry until 12.30 p.m. And then it tells what trailhead I started at. So when my boyfriend comes home, he knows what trailhead I started at. And then here's my route on there. So he knows where those um, routes are. And then I usually give an estimate of, okay, I'm going maybe about 12-ish miles. I went alone. If I went with someone, I could circle that one, put their names. And then I know I have cell service there. If I'm not sure, I hit maybe. And then, of course, the really important stuff down here, have food ready for me. That's always a nice one. So sometimes I get have pizza ready for me when I get home. Um, so that's a really cool way. But also an easier, an easier way if you don't have something like that is you can create your route on Gaia, like I just showed you on that previous slide. And you can share those routes with your friends and family. So sometimes I will create the route and just leave it on the computer at home so my boyfriend can see it. Um, sometimes I will create the route and then just send it to my girlfriends and say, hey, this is the route I'm planning on doing. I'm going by myself just so you know where I'm at. Um, I don't ever think you can be too cautious with that. So that way, if something ever happened and I sprained my ankle, I'm out there way longer they know exactly what route and where to start looking for me if something happened. Uh, we talked about this already, but bringing a paper map, phone, GPS, and make sure you practice using it before you're out on the trail. So practice at home, practice outside, practice making a route like just in your neighborhood and see if you can follow it on your phone. Um, practice putting the phone in airplane mode when you do have cell phone service so you can make sure it works when, it's, when you don't have cell phone service. Um, do all that stuff before you get out there and that'll make you feel way more confident as well. And then I did mention the spot trackers. So here is a picture of a popular spot tracker for lots of trail runners. It's the Garmin InReach Mini. It's nice because it's pretty small. Um, they are a little bit more expensive. So I have one of these. I usually only use it if I'm going like way out in the back country of the mountains, because otherwise I will just use my um, phone, but when I'm out in the mountains, I know there's no cell phone service. And this allows me to communicate with my friends and family back home. Um, so, um, the Garmin inReach mini has an app that you can download on your phone. And then you can text through that app on your phone, even when you have no service and it connects to the inReach mini through Bluetooth. And then, so it sends that message through the satellites to your friends and family. It also has a SOS button on the side. So some, if something happens to you and you need search and rescue, you push that button, it alerts search and rescue, and it tells them exactly where you're at. It gives them a GPS point, and then they can send search and rescue to you. Um, also with this, you can send a map share to your friends and family, and it tracks different data points every either 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever interval you set. And then your friends and family can see exactly where you're at while you're out there as well. Um, so if you are thinking of wanting to get out for bigger adventures or go up in the mountains, I highly, highly recommend taking a spot tracker out with you. Um, the next one on the safety list is just being alert of potential wildlife encounters you can run into. I think this is a big one that people always ask me. And my mom was always on me. What do you, what if you run into a bear? And, um, I was like, well, if I run a bear, I'm going to do this. So if you know what kind of wildlife is around you and research the, that animal's type of behavior, um, then you're going to feel more comfortable out there because if you happen to run into it, you will know what to do. So I've had a couple experiences of running into black bears and also a cougar and 
while it, my first time that happened, it was, it was pretty scary, but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be because I had researched the heck out of what to do if I see a black bear versus a grizzly bear, because there are differences. Um, and I knew that black bears, they generally don't want anything to do with you. And you're supposed to be big and yell and scream and they'll run away. Um, sometimes black bears will do like a false charge at you if they feel threatened, but they really don't want to attack you. So it might look like they're going to, but they really don't want to. So that just means give them some space. Um, same thing with when I saw the cougar, it was, I knew what to do and I know you don't turn your back. So if there's anything like that, that you're worried about, I think knowledge is power. So just research their behaviors, research what they sound like. Um, a cougar out in the wild, I guess when they're in heat sound like, like a screaming woman, like somebody like a woman dying. So I just went on YouTube and searched like, okay, cougar sounds and just so I'm familiar with it. Um, you can also look up different types of scat and see what that looks like. So if you're out there, you can know, okay, oh, that's cougar scat or, oh, that's, or that's just deer scat. So that way, if you see a bunch of deer poop, you don't get worried, not like wondering, oh my God, is it a cougar? Do I need to be more careful? That way, you know, like what is around you. So just, yeah, knowledge. Um, and then the last one is always checking the weather and dress accordingly. Weather can change pretty fast, especially if you are out further in the mountains. So just make sure you always have layers with you if needed. Um, and around here in the Pacific Northwest, it's always moody weather. So layers are very important. It's like got a short sleeve, a long sleeve, a jacket, rain jacket. Just make sure you know what the weather could potentially do while you're out there and know that it can change quickly. So next slide, talking about safety part two, what should you carry on a trail run? And what you should carry is going to differ um, based on how far you're going. But generally on a trail run, you should probably have some sort of running vest. And down here in this picture, you can see there's a variety of running vests here. So depending on how far you're going, how much stuff you want to carry, there's all different levels of vests. So what I recommend is going to a trail running store and trying on the vests too, um, before you go out there and kind of see where the pockets are, if you think you'll like that or not, see how it fits. One person might say like, oh, I really love this vest. It's amazing. And then you get the same one because they said it was amazing, but you put it on and it just, it doesn't fit you the same. Your chest might be bigger or your shoulders are just, our bodies are different. So you want to find the right vest for you. And then you want to also find, um, one that has the right amount of space that you need. So once you kind of figure out what vest you want to buy, you can, um, things that you should put in it are probably either a bladder. So that's what you put water in. Usually a bladder is the thing that it goes in the back and it usually has a like tube that you can just suck and drink the water while you are running. Um, and there are different um, volumes of that that you can get. You can get like a liter, two liters, three liters, depending on how much your pack holds too. Um, you can also buy little flasks for water that will just sit in the front part and they're collapsible. So as you drink it, they just get smaller. So they're not like hard plastic. Uh, again, bring up cell phone, GPS device, and a charger for your cell phone or GPS device. Uh, we don't want that to die if that's what you're using. One of my girlfriends recently, who's very familiar with going out on the trails and navigating with the Gaia GPS, she was out and uh, was out longer than expected and was using her phone more and her phone died while she was out there. And she had a freak out moment because she didn't know like where she was at. She was at a very confusing maze of places. And um, she eventually, she found her way back out, but she said she's never going to go out without always having her charger. So bring your cell phone charger. You can buy little battery banks to take with you that can charge your phone. Um, then a paper map as well. Headlamp. Uh, I always advise bringing a headlamp if you think you're going to be out there you know, later in the afternoon and could potentially run a sunset. Sometimes runs could take longer than you expect. Or when you're in the woods, when the sun sets, it gets way darker in there, even before the sun sets. So just having one, it's really annoying to have to use your cell phone light to get out of the mountains or woods. I've done it. It's annoying. So a headlamp is much better. 
extra layers are always good to put in your pack. Even if you're, I don't know. I feel like I pack my rain jacket all a lot, but I feel like sometimes when I bring it, then that helps it not rain. <laughs> so I like to just be more prepared. Um, I just, I, I believe that I'd rather have something and not need it than not have something and end up needing it. Um, if you're going out a little bit further, a basic first aid kit is good to have. doesn't have to have much. You can buy little like day pack kits from REI or online that just have some basic first aid, scissors, band-aids, just some basic stuff. And even if you don't need it, you might run into another trail runner out there who might need it. And then if you're in the back countries, um, there's always, there's a list called the 10 essentials. So that's something you can just find on the internet. So there's just 10 essentials that if you ever go out back country, you should always have with you. A big one and the fun part of trail running is bring extra calories, food, gels, liquid calories. I got, that's why I got my picture of a cinnamon roll here um, on the trail. That's the best part is eating all the food. And when you're trail running, you're usually burning a little bit more calories than road running. You're out there for longer. You've got elevation changes. So bring all the extra food that you want, snacks. I've had friends bring pizza on the trails, burritos, sushi, like all kinds of good stuff. Um, you get to eat. So yeah, enjoy snacking. If you got a pack, you might as well put food in it. I think a lot, I've got a pocket on mine that they call it the burrito pocket. I'm like, I've definitely put a burrito actually in that pocket. Um, this last slide talks about trekking poles. These are kind of, these are optional, I would say. Um, you don't have to use them. Sometimes they're nice if you are a little bit worried about the technical terrain. Uh, the benefits of poles is that they help to spread the workload across the body. So they'll help to take help to take some of the pressure off of your knees and joints. They can help improve your posture when you're tired. They'll give you a little bit more stability. Um, and a lot of people think like, oh, I'll get my poles out because they'll help me when I'm going uphill, which yes, they will. But also they help a lot on downhills as well to take that pressure off of your legs. They help on technical terrain. This picture in the background is actually me at Mount St. Helens and a girlfriend of mine were out on the trail, both using our poles. And you can kind of see the trails kind of sideways, a little technical. So we got our poles down here to help balance us on this trail. So some things to look at in trekking poles are the handle and the strap. Um, you wanna make sure you choose the right length for your body. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can multiply your height in centimeters by this number, round to the nearest five centimeters for the height of the pole. Or you just imagine you're holding a pole with your elbow at a 90 degree angle, and then you measure the distance from the ground to the top of your hand. Um, and some poles are adjustable. Some you buy um, at a certain height that would be just for you. So there's a lot of options. And if you are looking for poles for trail running, I would look for folding or collapsible poles. So that way, when you are running, if you get to a point where you don't want to use your poles anymore. You can just fold them up or collapse them and then stick them in your pack. Um, and then, yeah, so I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to talk about today. Just general overview. Here's some resources, 10 essentials checklist for backcountry. Um, she jumps and Gaia actually paired and they were offering a free three month trial for anybody. So we can also put, we can put all this stuff in the email for you guys as well. Um, but you can click that and get a three month trial of Gaia to see what it's like. And then also online trail running coaching. So I'm a, I am a coach with team run run and, um, they match runners with coaches. So they have like a, I don't know how many, like maybe 90 coaches on there. And once you log on to their website, you can, um, filter what you're looking for in a coach. So if you're looking just specifically for a trail running coach, you can hit trail running coach only. You can filter by prices and then that'll narrow down your list of people that you are looking for. Um, and for people that registered for this course, I'm offering a free 40 minute consult with me. Um, and we can talk about any other questions or go into more depth about anything that we talked about here. If you want to learn a little bit more about Gaia or navigation or gear or just any, whatever, we can talk about anything and a 40 minute consult with you guys. Um, yeah. So are you ready to trail run? Just get out there, have fun adventure. And it's, 
it's amazing. It's very, it's very empowering. And, um, I love being out on, alone on the trails. All righty. So I guess, are there any questions? If you have any questions, you can, um, I guess put it in the chat and we can see that. I guess I'll just, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Alicia, for this presentation. You did such an awesome job. Thank you. <laughs> you explained it so perfectly. Um, yeah, if, if there um, is any questions, feel free to chat, um, put in the chat. If not, um, you can always um, hit us up later with it. Um, but thank you for everyone. Um, who were able to make it today. And I, um, we will, we always do record um, these videos. Um, and so we will send it out to everyone who did register for this course. And then eventually it does, um, I think like in a couple of months it will actually be put on YouTube. If you ever wanted to come back to it later or you lost the video in your email, totally fine. Um, and when we send out the uh, recording of the video to those who register, we will also add um, the Gaia 101 link will add, um, Alicia's contact info, um, if you were interested in that um, free consultation and they're um, wanting to get started on trail running. So I don't see any other questions. Oh, wait, let's see. I think that one from Sherry. Oh, perfect. Um, I just saw a little thing come up. So Sherry just asked, what's your favorite trail run or race you've done? And that's a hard question. So I've done like, it's hard to pick just one. Um, but I would say, I mean, hmm, one of my favorite ones is the Orcas Island uh, 50 miler that I did. They also have a half marathon as well. And they also have a half marathon, marathon and 50 mile race. And Orcas Island is just a magical, magical place. So if you ever get the chance to run out there, hike out there, I highly recommend those trails. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, um, there isn't any more questions. We'll go ahead and log out here again. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll send you out a link um, pretty soon here and have a good rest of your day. Thanks so much, Alicia. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Is there anything else on my end that I need to do or can I just log off? <laughs> <laughs>